Hello everyone, it's Richard from Home Tech Video. In this video, I'm going to be going over cloning cameras within Blue Iris. So for the first question that you might have is, why in the world would you ever want to clone a camera? Well, very simple. Cloning a camera gives you a lot more control over one specific camera um, than you would, you know, basically it's almost like having two cameras in one. Um, really, really nice thing about when you clone a camera is that it does not um, use any additional CPU usage. So here in a minute, I'm going to show you this camera currently is only, um, if I go under the statistics tab and go under uh, cameras, this front garage camera is only pulling around 725 uh, kilobytes per second under the bitrate. If I go back into this statistic later and looked at my clone camera, which would show up in this list, it's going to show zero under the bitrate. And I'll show you here in a minute when I clone a camera. So reasons, why would I want to clone a camera? Well, let's say this camera is recording um, only when triggered. Let's say you want to have this camera start recording when the car drives down the road or when a deer walks in front of your driveway or when somebody's leaving the house. That's all fine, fine and dandy, you know, for triggers to let you know, you know, hey, the camera go ahead, went ahead and started recording. But let's say you wanted to have this camera set up to send you a text notification to your phone. Well, that might get kind of annoying to have a text come through every single time that a car drives down the road or a squirrel runs across the driveway or, you know, you're leaving the house. Maybe you only want to know what happens when or an event that happens when something comes from the main road here into your driveway. Let's say that's the only time that you'd want a notification set up. So how would we do this? Well, we do this by cloning this camera. So right now this camera for all example purposes, this camera is recording continuously. I have it also set up for alerts, the entire zone area. If I go into my camera properties here, trigger, motion sensor, I only have one zone set up under on this camera. And actually, I don't even have my road um, as set up as a trigger except this little area right here, which actually I need to go in and adjust this out. So let's go and take a little bit of the road out. So the only time that this camera ever triggers is if, if there's any motion that happens inside the um, my, my property line, essentially. Um, even if this bush is swaying, it's gonna get it triggered. But now how do I set it up to where I would only get a text message alert if something walks into the driveway? Very simply, we clone the camera. Now there's two ways that you can clone a camera. Um, the first way I'm gonna show you is by, um, first of all, knowing what the IP address of the camera that you're wanting to clone. So in this example, my front door, our front garage camera, I'm going to go into the uh, video tab and the uh, IP address is 192.168.8.52. I would go into the plus sign here and add in a camera like I normally would do. And we're going to type in cloned camera. And for the short name, I'm just going to type in cloned or clone. Now, normally we would go in here and type in, uh, click on network IP, hit OK, and then enter in that IP address. Um, of the camera that you're wanting to add and that's how that's one way that you can clone it or you can go in here and do copy from another camera and then select the camera that you want to hit or the clone from and then hit OK. Now in this demonstration I'm not going to use this example because when you copy from another camera it copies all of the settings over. So every single profile, every single um, you know zone that's set up, alerts, everything and you know when you first do this you might miss something. You might accidentally forget to uncheck you know, go in and, you know, if you use profiles, you might accidentally forget to change everything in a uh, in profile number two. And then when you're in profile one, everything is working fine. And then when Blue Iris switches over to a different profile, this clone camera is doing exactly what the other camera is doing and um, you're not receiving any alerts. So for this example, I'm just going to go into network IP, hit OK. I'm going to add in the camera, the same IP address of this existing one. Change the password and then just hit OK. So now all of the default settings are in here like you would if you just were adding the camera in for the very, very first time. So a couple of things that I'd like to do, I'm going to go into my recording tab. Now, since I already have this, the other, the, the main camera recording continuously, I don't need any recording on this one whatsoever. The only purpose of this camera is to be, in this example, to send me an alert when somebody comes in the driveway. So I'm going to turn off the record settings for under video and then also un uncheck create alert list image when triggered because my other camera is already doing that. I'm going to also change direct to disk for the video compression. Hit OK. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and save this for now and show you how it's now gonna add in a second camera. So now I have a cloned camera. If I go back into my status button, and then under the cameras tab, you'll notice that I have front garage. This is my original one pulling the same 740 bit rate. And my clone camera down here is at zero kilobytes per second. This is because this camera is pulling from the same stream as the original camera. Thus, it is not gonna change the CPU usage whatsoever. So right now I'm hovering at 20 to 23%. If I disable this clone camera, it's still going to change. Or it's not going to affect anything on the CPU usage. So now let's go ahead and set up my alert that I wanted to set up, like I when I said in the beginning of this video. So I'm going to go into my clone camera, go into properties. Uh, I'm going to go into my alerts tab. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and set up the uh, the trigger first. So I'm going to go into my triggers tab uh, under motion sensor configure. Kind of tweak these in the way that I want. Now, I'm going to show you how to set up a zone crossing alert. Like I said, if anybody walks from the um, main road into my driveway, that's when it's going to send me an alert. So how, do I, how am I going to do this? Well, the first thing I need to do is set up my zones. And now I've covered this a little bit in an, another video, but I'm going to go ahead and show you again for this uh, purpose. So I'm going to set up zone A as the beginning of, oh, let's make that a little bit larger. So this is going to be zone A. So basically anything that happens in this area that's in green is zone A. Zone B is going to be the bottom part of my driveway. So I'm going to set this to my bottom part. Actually, I'm going to take the grass out here because you know what? I just, I, I just really want to know what happens in the driveway. I really don't care about the grass. So let me go back to zone A, clear this out. And then if you watched any of my other videos, I say to leave a little bit of a gap here between the two. That way, if anything originates in here for whatever reason, um, it doesn't trigger it. And then zone G, I'm just gonna use as a filler zone, but it's not gonna be used. So save that. So now we got zone A, which is the top portion of the driveway. Zone B is the bottom portion. Uh, I have my minimum object size and contrast set to usually how I like it. The minimum duration, I have this cranked down really low because something's gonna have to cross from zone um, A to B for this to work. Now, the second thing I need to do is go into my object detection settings. So I'm gonna have, make sure that this is enabled and hit edit. And then I'm gonna use object zone, uh, cross zone. So right now I'm gonna set this to A to B. Oh, I'm sorry, A dash B. So what this means is if anything happens from zone A to B or B to A, it'll trigger it. Um, I could do it this way, or you know what? Let's just say I only want to know when something comes from the road into my property. So I'm gonna change this to A to B. Um, so A greater than B. So what this means is if anything originates in zone A and crosses into zone B, that's within the object size, it'll go ahead and make this uh, alert trigger. I'm going to turn these other two um, object detection settings off just for this example and then hit OK. Save that and then go into my alerts and so for my motion zones, I'm going to say when this camera is triggered, which my trigger setting is already set up, in the two motion zones, so we got A and B. And then I'm gonna have this send me a text message. And I'll put my number in here just for testing purposes when I go out there and test it. I'm gonna have it attach me a current image so I know what's happening. And then hit OK. And then hit OK. So that cameras are gonna restart. Now this camera, my clone camera, is only going, the, the only purpose of this clone camera as it's sitting right now, is to send me a text message when something crosses from the top part of my driveway into the bottom part of the driveway. That's the only thing this camera is doing. My original camera is still recording 24-7, this bottom camera. Um, it's still triggering alerts if anything moves on my property 
but it's not going to send me a text message if anything moves on my property. The only time I'm going to get a text message if something moves from the top to the bottom. So let me go ahead and go outside and test this out and show you how it works. The bottom camera in this example is my original camera. The red border around the camera shows that the camera is recording uh, currently. And the top camera is the clone camera. So watch the border on the top camera. When the top camera border goes red, that means that it's in a triggered state. So when I walk onto the screen here, I'm going to walk on and you notice the bottom camera will generate a clip in the very top right corner, meaning that the bottom camera is in a triggered state and it went ahead and, and generated an alert. The top camera, however, has not done anything. There's no red border around it. But when I walk from the road now into the driveway, as soon as I cross from zone A, which I'm in currently, into zone B, the camera triggers red border, and now there is a cloned uh, clone image or uh, image of what happened on the camera that is designated as a clone, and then it also sent me a text message because that's how I had it set up. So I hope this video helps and um, helps you understand a little bit on why to use a cologne camera, how to use them, and gives you a couple of examples. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.